This LOS is explain the Ricardian and Heckscher Olin models of trade and the sources of comparative advantage in each model. International trade. Ricardian and Heckscher Olin models of comparative advantage. Recall a country has an absolute advantage in producing a good or service if it is able to produce that good at a lower absolute cost or use fewer resources in its production than its trading partner. A country has a comparative advantage in producing a good if its opportunity cost of producing that good is less than that of its trading partner. Even if a country does not have an absolute advantage in the production of any good, it can gain from trade by producing and exporting the goods in which it has a comparative advantage and importing goods in which it has a comparative disadvantage. In the Ricardian model of trade, comparative advantage and the pattern of trade are determined by differences in technology between countries. In the Heckscher Olin model of trade, comparative advantage and the patterns of trade are determined by differences in factor endowments between countries. In reality, technology and factor endowments are complementary, not mutually exclusive determinants of trade patterns. So continuing with the differences between the Ricardian and Heckscher Olin models of comparative advantage, on the left hand side we have a box for Ricardian. Countries specialize in the goods and services for which they have a competitive advantage, correct? The source of comparative advantage is labor productivity. Labor productivity is attributed to differences in technology. And countries trade because of differences in labor productivity. In the Heckscher Olin, comparative advantage arises from different endowments of capital and labor. Capital and labor are variable factors of productivity. Countries trade because of different relative amounts of capital and labor. There's an efficiency of uh, uh, production uh, matters as well. And this model allows for income redistribution between owners and capital and labor through trade. A quick practice question to check our understanding. In the Ricardian trade model, comparative advantage is determined by A, technology, B, the capital to labor ratio, or C, the level of labor productivity. Okay, this question should be easy. You gotta go with your gut, but it shows that, uh, as I often say, the CFA test is a English test, in this case, subject economics, okay? And uh, sometimes the language can cause a little bit of confusion. And what do I mean by that? Because when we look at this one, in the Ricardian trade model, comparative advantage is determined by, yes, technology. We saw that, we saw that in the first slide. In the Ricardian model of trade, comparative advantage and the pattern of trade are determined by differences in technology between countries. But then on the next slide, it talked a little bit about uh, labor productivity. So C could cause us a little bit of confusion. But the comparative advantage is not determined by the level of labor productivity, no. It says the source of comparative advantage, it's not the level, it's the source, is labor productivity. And labor productivity is attributed to differences in technology. So it's a bit of a word game here. But you gotta go with your gut. And of course, uh, you know, which one is more right? Of course, it's A. In the Ricardian trade model, comparative advantage is determined by technology. That's clear. Determined by differences in technology between countries. So a good little question, and it focuses on the fact that you gotta be just very careful with the English language and go with the answer that you know is most right. Another practice question. I find with these economics word games, it's just, uh, again, the best way to, uh, to get good at it is just to practice as many questions as possible. And I find particularly in this section that this is purely English language test subject economics. So again, another quick practice question. In the Ricardian trade model, a country captures more of the gains from trade if A, it produces all products while its trade partner specializes in one good. B, the terms of trade are closer to its autarkic prices than to its partner's autarkic prices, or C, the terms of trade are closer to its partner's autarkic prices than to its autarkic prices? Well, C is the correct answer, and um, I passed all three CFA exams on the first attempt. 
English is my first language. On level one, I got over 70 in every category, except for economics, and that was supposedly my undergraduate. So you can tell how much I love these types of questions. I don't know if I can uh, even read that question again in terms of the pronunciation. <laughs> okay, anyhow, C is correct. A country gains if trade increases the price of its exports relative to its imports as compared to its autarkic prices, i.e. the final terms of trade are more favorable than its autarkic prices. If the relative price of exports and imports remains the same after trade opens, then the country will consume the same basket of goods before and after trade opens and it gains nothing from its ability to trade. In that case, its trade partner will capture all of the gains. Of course, the opposite true if the roles are reversed. More generally, a country captures more of the gains from trade the more the final terms of trade differ from its autarkic prices. Anyhow, you're targeting to get over 70, not to get perfect. This is one question that I might have uh, had to guess on with all that uh, funny language. And two more practice questions to finish this LOS. The first one, Germany has much more capital per worker than Portugal. In autarky, each country produces and consumes both machine tools and wine. Production of machine tools is relatively capital intensive, whereas winemaking is labor intensive. According to the Heckscher Olin model, when trade opens, A, Germany should export machine tools and Portugal should export wine. B, Germany should export wine and Portugal should export machine tools. Or C, Germany should produce only machine tools and Portugal should produce only wine. Okay, I think that question was a little bit easier one. So A is correct. In the Heckscher Olin model, a country has a comparative advantage in goods whose production is intensive in the factor with which it is relatively abundantly endowed. In this case, capital is relatively abundant in Germany, so Germany has a comparative advantage in producing the capital-intensive product, machine tools. Portugal is relatively labor abundant, hence should produce and export the labor-intensive product, which is wine. I think that question was fairly common sense and uh, a fairly easy one. And the last practice question to finish this LOS, according to the heckscher olin model, when trade opens, a, the scarce factor gains relative to the abundant factor in each country. B, the abundant factor gains relative to the scarce factor in each country. Or C, income is redistributed between countries but not within each country. Okay, again, I didn't think that question was too difficult. B is correct. As a country opens up to trade, it has a favorable impact on the abundant factor and a negative impact on the scarce factor. This is because trade causes the output mix to change and therefore changes the relative demand for the factors of production. Increased output of the export product increases demand for the factor that is used intensively in its production, while reduced output of the import product decreases demand for the factor used intensively in its production. Because the export product uses the abundant factor intensively, the abundant factor gains relative to the scarce factor in each country. And that's the last slide for this LOS. Thank you.